Welcome to the sixth video in the Get Started Fast with Pro Tools First series. We now have a complete set of tracks and we're finished with both audio and editing. So now, it's time to create a final mix of the song. The song we've been working on is now fully recorded and arranged, and we've been using some of the great plugins included with Pro Tools First to go ahead and dial in our mix. Let's take a quick look. Let me go over here to our mix window. Let's go ahead and give a quick listen. Here in our main drum loop, you can see that we've got our EQ3 7 band built into Pro Tools first, handling some of the low end and accentuating some of the high end as well. Over here on the expand loop, we've got our Dyne 3 compressor limiter. And of course, we've got over here in a couple of auxiliaries, we've got our D-verb and Mod Delay 3. And of course, once our guitar comes in, the graphic EQ that we downloaded from the Avid in-app marketplace is being used to accentuate some of the frequencies there. Now on our master fader, we've got a couple of plugins as well, including EQ3, a Dyne 3 compressor limiter, and a dither plugin for noise shaping when we render the final mix. Okay, excellent. Now in all of the videos in this series, we've been using AAX plugins in our inserts. Now AAX is the avid platform for plugins inside of Pro Tools and Pro Tools First. There's actually another type of plugin available to you in Pro Tools and Pro Tools First. These types of plugins are called Audio Suite plugins. Now, Audio Suite plugins are going to be plugins that you're going to use directly on a track to apply that effect permanently to that clip or track. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and solo our guitar here, and we're going to focus right on the end part of this track. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Now let's say on that very last transient of the guitar, we wanted to have a nice reverb tail. Now of course we could actually go in and we can automate that. I showed you how you could automate different parameters in the last video, but let's go ahead and use our audio suite plugins to go ahead and apply that reverb effect directly to that piece of audio. Now to do that, we need to dial in that last final transient of the waveform. To do that, let's go ahead and use another tool here in Pro Tools First called Tab to Transient. Now, Tab to Transient does exactly what it sounds like. It allows me to use the Tab key on my keyboard to find the next transient of a piece of audio in a clip. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead, make sure Tab to Transient selected, and I'm just going to go right here, zoom in a little bit to our clip, and I'm going to use Tab to Transient to find that very last transient of this clip. And there it is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the B key for break, to go ahead and split that audio into two pieces. So now I've got two separate clips right here. Now this last clip is a transient that I want to go ahead and use my Audio Suite plugins to affect. Let's go ahead and quickly listen to it. So now we've got our clip selected. Let's go ahead and navigate our mouse right up here to the Audio Suite plugin, and you can see here are the Audio Suite plugins available to us. We're going to go ahead and select the reverb. That's Dverb, built right into Pro Tools first. And let's go ahead and bring the gain up, and we'll go ahead and we'll dial it back on the mix so we have a mixture of the dry and the wet signal, let's say about 34% wet. And let's go ahead and use a nice, big, large church reverb with a pretty big decay. Now we can actually preview what that's going to sound like before we apply it by just navigating our mouse right down to the bottom left-hand side of the plugin and use our plugin processing button right here. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. Perfect. Now that's exactly what I want to do for that clip, so I'm now going to go ahead and hit the render button. And you can see here that the audio is now processed with the reverb already there. So I can actually go ahead and take the plugin away. Let's go ahead and hit play on the clip, and let's give it a quick listen. Excellent. And now just to dial it in a little bit more, let's go ahead and add a fade to the end of that tail for the reverb. To do that, I'm just going to navigate my mouse right to the top right hand side of the clip, click on my mouse, and I can go ahead and drag a fade right over on the clip. Now I'm in grid mode, so it's actually going to adhere to the grid. Let's go ahead and put it in slip mode and try it again. And now we can quickly dial in the kind of fade we need for the end of the clip. There we go. Now we've got our track pretty much mixed and ready to go. What we need to do right now is go ahead and render it or bounce it. 
Now, of course, we've gone ahead and saved our session, and we're going to make sure that nothing is either in mute or solo mode, and we also want to make sure that nothing is in record enable mode. Once we've got that ready to go, to render our track, we can simply navigate right up to our file menu and select export. Now we're going to go ahead and export the entire audio mix, so we're going to select that, and our export audio mix window is going to come up. Now here, you're going to be able to choose your mix down source, and typically that's going to be your stereo output 1 and 2. Now you can see here that you have the ability to choose either a WAV or an AIFF file. Typically, you're going to want to bounce down to a WAV file. Now the format, normally we're going to choose interleaved. Interleaved basically means stereo. We also have multiple mono and mono summed available if we need to bounce anything in those formats. Now for our bit depth and sample rate, we're going to want to make that CD quality. So we're going to leave that at 16-bit, 44 1 kilohertz. Of course, in Pro Tools First, you have the ability to export your mix at higher bit depths and sample rates if you choose to do so. But let's go ahead and make this CD quality. So we're going to leave that at 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz. Now, of course, we're going to want to go ahead and name our track. So let's go ahead and name it right here. And we can actually choose where we want to have the track bounce to. Let's go ahead and choose the desktop. Now, once I click the export button, Pro Tools First is going to go ahead and export that audio file as a stereo 2 track file in real time. Now, if I want to go ahead and do it faster than real time, I simply need to click the offline button and Pro Tools First will now render that track faster than real time. So it'll actually take this song, which is just a couple of minutes long, but it's going to render it as a file in just a couple of seconds. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and click export. And in just a couple of seconds, you see that Pro Tools First has now bounced that song and that file is now available on my desktop. So here's our full song, fully rendered from Pro Tools First. We can go ahead and click on it and preview it. Now if you wanted to go ahead and create an MP3 from this WAV file, all you would simply need to do is import it into iTunes and convert it to an MP3. Once it's converted to an MP3, you now have the ability to upload it to all of your social media, including SoundCloud, YouTube, or whatever social media you prefer. And let's not forget that with Pro Tools First and your Avid account, you've also got a great opportunity to use the Avid Marketplace. When you registered for Pro Tools First, you also signed up to be a part of the Avid artist community in the Marketplace. To go ahead and access your profile, you'll just need to go to avid.com and sign in. Once you sign in, you'll be in your account section. You'll just need to click on Access the Artist Community right here under My Products. Once you're in, you'll have access to your profile, your portfolio, where you can actually go ahead and add material you've been working on. And of course, you've got your connections page as well, where you'll be able to see all the people you're connected with, people who are following you, groups you're a member of, as well as take a look at messages that have been sent to you from other members. The Avid Arts community is a great way to share what you've been working on and actually monetize your hard work. Make sure you take advantage of this amazing community. In this video series, we've touched on just the beginning of all the things that Pro Tools First has available to you. Feel free to experiment, try different things out, and we look forward to hearing what you come up with in Pro Tools First.